Hey everyone out there, my name is Shaheen. I'm an inbound marketing account manager over at Iterate Marketing, and I just wanted to give you a quick introduction on using Screaming Frog. If you want a little bit more of an explanation on how to crunch data and advanced functionality, I would suggest that you go to one of our more advanced videos where we sort of get into how to crawl a really massive e-commerce site. But if you just need a quick little introduction and don't really know too much about Screaming Frog, this is definitely the video for you. So Screaming Frog is a Java-based web crawler that basically just jumps through your entire site architecture, clicking on every internal link. So if you are a site owner yourself and you have someone working on your site or you just want to check it out from an SEO perspective, Screaming Frog is a really useful tool for you because you can get a really quick summary of all the stuff that's outwardly facing on your website without having to really be too technically savvy. And on the plus side, Screaming Frog also does it really quickly. So when you first open up the interface, it's a really, really simple and toned down program. There's not really a lot to confuse you. So at the very, very top, you basically just have this little bar and it's almost like Google, right? You can just type in your site URL and press start and it will start jumping through all of your content and you can press stop and pause, you can clear, you can zoom, and to the right is this little status bar. Now, don't be scared if this gets paused at a certain place or gets to 80% done and then jumps down to 15 because sometimes the crawler might come to a page on your site that has 100 links that link out to another 15 pages. So it basically is just going through your website, discovering links within the structure, and because of that, it might take a while and you might have more pages than you're really aware of. So when you type in your URL, the first thing that I want to bring your attention to is if you see right here, we have this little 301 move permanently status code. And what actually happened there is that I typed in iteratemarketing.com at our old website without the www, right? So what that's done is that when I type it in like that, it actually pops using this 301 redirect to the correct www.iteratemarketing.com website. And you actually want that to happen. What you don't want happening as a site owner and maybe business owner on the web is Google indexing multiple versions in its eyes of your website. So if you get one version without the www and another version with the www and maybe even you have a certain issue with the setup of your website where you can get the HTTPS indexed and then you're getting sort of clones of your site over with HTTPS. You don't really want to be in that situation with Google because it might view your site as either trying to beef itself up to look bigger than it really is in the eyes of Google or just having duplicate content. And also with some pretty serious ramifications in terms of not advertising your strengths, if you get people linking to your website and they are sort of linking to what could essentially be considered three different domains, you're not really getting as much authority in the eyes of Google as you should be. And Google really is using all these people linking to your sites as a metric of the quality of the website. Okay, so that said, you've typed in your website URL and you get all this data spitting out at you. You don't really know what it, what it means, right? So the first thing that I will bring your attention to is in the top left corner right here, you have the filter. And I really, really love this because it basically lets you jump through and categorize all your site content. If you click on HTML, you basically just see the HTML pages. JavaScript will show you any JavaScript you have on your site, which could tell you that you have some duplicates that you don't want to have and you can sort of get your web developer on compressing that stuff so your site's even faster either when Google's crawling it or you're trying to have customers use it. You can look at your CSS. Again, if you have a lot of duplicates, that's something to really think about because that's an easy place. You can save some kilobytes of memory and basically make it so that when people come to your site, it is working a little bit faster. And of course, images, you may have put up some PDFs and sort of forgotten about them. And this would be a really great place to check on what kind of content you're giving to your customers. 
Also Flash, if you're still running any of that, and also the other category will catch sort of random files that you might have on your website. So one other thing that I'll talk about in this little opening screen before jumping out to some of these other sections up here is this little filter total button right here. This and the filter up here are sort of the two main things that I sort of pay attention to when I'm parsing through one of my websites or someone else's website. This little filter basically tells you that, hey, you have 86 HTML pages on your website, and if we go to images, really quickly it tells you you have 145 images. And when you're in this little HTML section, one really cool thing about Screaming Frog that maybe isn't something that you can sort of do very easily if you're a site owner. I know it looks like a lot of stuff that's up here, but if you go all the way to the very end, you get some really cool little numbers over here. So you get the size of your HTML, you get your word count, which is really cool because I think if you have a super massive e-commerce site, and keep in mind that the free version of Screaming Frog only crawls 500 pages. If you check out some of our more advanced videos, we'll have some strategies for crawling, you know, 10,000 plus page e-commerce sites and dealing with some of the sort of duplicate URL issues that jump up there. But let's say you even have 50 or 60 products. This is a really quick way to see, hey, why do I have these pages with zero words on them basically or why am I only putting a 248 product description when I could be putting a thousand word product description or you know you, you ideally want to be aiming for five to eight hundred words I would think um, and even if you're getting a little too long-winded this is a really good way to check on how you're doing stuff and the other thing that I think is really cool is this level feature so what this tells you is sort of essentially the depth of your on-site content now, if you have something that's really important to you, let's say you have a new product promo that you just set up, it's really cool, it's really awesome, you want everyone to see it, but it's at level nine on your site or something like that, that means that it's really buried under the content, that it's taking a crawler a while to get there, and it's probably gonna take your customers a while to get there if they do it all, and they may not even know it's there because it's sort of buried, right? And then the other thing that I wanna point out at the end of this little screen right here is this little in links and out links section. This sort of functions on the same principle as the level burying, right? If you don't have very many in links on something that you want to emphasize, then you might want to readjust how your site is wired because if it's something you want people to see, I would suggest that you do want to have a lot of in links going to it from other pages on your site. And the outlink sort of speaks to how many navigational elements you have on a singular page. This can also be really useful if, let's say you have a page and it only has a few outlinks, but most of your other pages have 20 or 30, right? That sort of tells you that, hey, I might be getting some of my users into a little hole here that I don't want to really be pushing them. Okay, so back to this very top menu bar. The other thing that's really important here is your page titles. Now, from an SEO perspective, it seems like a really small thing, but I think that when you consider the fact that most of your customers are gonna be searching for a product or a service that you offer, or maybe even just your company in Google, the first thing they're gonna see is this page title. It's the really big blue or purple, basically headline, that really sort of tells customers and people and Google, more importantly, what your web page is about. So I really stress to clients when I'm working with them that, hey, you know, let's spend some time on your title tags and let's make sure that these really are getting to the core of what you're trying to say and who you're trying to speak to with a particular page. Now, one thing that's really of note here, excuse me, one thing that's really of note here is that if you look at this filter, there's a whole bunch of really easy and awesome functionality that comes right built in with Screaming Frog. Now, if you click on missing, it'll basically tell you any pages that don't have title tags and you want this to be blank. If there are a bunch of pages missing with no title tags, you really wanna get on that as soon as you possibly can. On the flip side, you wanna look at duplicates as well. Now, don't be scared if this number's ballooning, right? Because it's counting the both duplicates. 
of a singular title tag. So you might want to divide by two. Sometimes pages might have one title tag stretched over 100 pages. So you might have a website with 800 duplicate title tags, right? But it's only duplicates of three title tags. So it's really good to check here how title tags are exactly duplicating. And then the other really important thing that I'd note to you is that, so very recently in early 2014, Google sort of changed how it was displaying title tags. So they're now actually a lot bigger than they used to be. And even though they're crawling them at this 65 character number, they're sort of counting your marketing material. You're saying, hey, I do this. I actually recommend to people that instead of sticking to a limit that's over 65 characters, they try to aim to limit themselves to not ever have a title tag that's over 512 pixels in length. Because what it does is it basically truncates the end of whatever your title tag is and it sort of introduces that element of mystery. And I don't really think that people want to click on something that sort of introduces that element of mystery into what a product might be when they're going to a new site they've never heard of. So I really recommend to people that they pay attention to this over 512 pixel limit and make sure that they're not doing that. And on the flip side, I would also go to this below 200 pixel level and say to yourself, hey, maybe I'm not saying everything that this page is actually about to my customer base. And if you look here, some of these title tags really don't describe to people what this page is actually about, right? So the next thing that I would jump to is the meta descriptions. Now, what you don't want to see is this, right? Blank meta descriptions. If you go to our old site and look at it, you'll see the same thing, right? Almost all of our pages are missing meta descriptions. And the way to quickly check this when you're looking at your own site is, again, this little filter total number down here. You see 69 missing meta descriptions, and then you actually click on all, you'll see the same situation where we have 69 total pages. So now you know that 100% of your pages are missing meta descriptions. So I personally don't think that as a site owner and you know someone who isn't really too concerned about every singular aspect of their site that I would worry too much about the external response codes, URI, meta keywords, H1s, H2s, directives, and the custom you can't use unless you have the professional version. And I'll go into the functionality of that in a future video. So the only other thing that I would really emphasize here are the images. Now, this is the only thing about Screaming Frog that I wish was a little bit better. It doesn't actually show you all the alt image text right here. You have to go again to the filter and click on all the ones that are missing alt text. And if you look here and again count your filter total, you'll see 64 missing that text. And if you go over here, you'll see, hey, I have a total of 145 images. So you know exactly what percentage of your images are missing alt text. Now the reason that this matters is because there are blind people that are using the internet. So in order to be in compliance with the American with Disabilities Act, you really want to fill that information in or at least have empty quotation marks because people that are using your site, you want to make sure that everyone can use it. And if you have government contracts as well, you want to be in compliance with that law. And the other flip side thing is I think there are also a lot of people that are missing out on marketing opportunities as well. If you are filling out this alt image text and a lot of your competitors aren't and you're in a competitive e-commerce environment, it might actually give you a pretty big edge to have this alt image text properly filled out and you can actually funnel a lot of customers to your site in that way and I really like that. So the last thing that I'm going to touch on when going over Screaming Frog is that if you then go back over all the things that we've covered, if you just click export, you can basically get an Excel document or a CSV of this specific content so you can start to crunch the numbers. Now, a lot of people like to just go here and sort of grab everything and then filter it as they see fit. But for me personally, I tend to like to break stuff up and sort of either grab everything that's over 512 pixels if I'm working on title tags and fix those immediately and sometimes there might be hundreds that might actually be the best way to go or just grab all of your title tags and see what you kind of want to spruce up as you go and you can just grab these CSVs. I'll get into that in the next video and talk about crawling much larger websites but that's 
pretty much a basic overview of everything that you're going to need to know when you're working with Screaming Frog. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter at S underscore Adibi, or you can message Iterate Marketing at Iterate Iterate. And uh, thank you.